I looked at several configurations for the lid latch and how to get it to hinge back and forth and close when the lid was lowered. Some use rubber spacers, others bits of leather. This one has a spring and a screw. And I decided to make a wood hinge that would pivot down here and a screw and a spring to provide enough closing pressure to return this to the closed position when the lid was lowered. These are the component pieces of the lid latch. I had a piece of rosewood that was thick enough to make two of these and I notched that out on the bandsaw and then sanded and filed it square. And I used the cutoff pieces to laminate this to make it thicker, alternating the grain so that's like plywood. And I put a couple of pieces on the end so that would fit inside this base piece. The base piece, I made two of these at the same time on the table saw and cut them lengthwise and then cut them off. Drilled both of them at the same time. That was the easiest way to keep that square. Drilled the hole in this one square and adjusted the thickness so that there's no slop in that. And the 3 16 wood doll goes in there. for a good fit. I made the second lid latch for the second organ, but I really don't want to drill this hole until I have this installed in the organ. And I can adjust this length so this matches the lid. This was installed in the organ after I knew that the length of this was the correct length to hold the lid firmly shut. This was screwed to the bottom of the pressure box and with this in place I then drilled this hole through the latch and into the pressure box. That's the only way you'll know for sure that it's going to align exactly. I had this spring in my spring collection. It's 5 16 diameter, inch and a half long. This is a compression spring and I only needed four coils of this. So I nipped that off with a pair of wire cutters. That will go on this 832 screw and this nut will be on the inside of the pressure box. Once we determine how long this needs to be, we'll have to cut this screw back so it doesn't stick in too far. We don't want that to be hitting the music on the take-up spool. We're looking at the bottom of the pressure box. The lid latch is hinged here. The base of the hinge, which looks like this, is screwed to the bottom of the pressure box. That 832 screw and the spring and then a washer is against that lid latch. Now we're looking at the top of the lid. Then we want to make sure that this crankshaft and connecting rod will clear. Put the connecting rod on there and I look at it from this side and I can see it clears. I look at the other side and I can see that it clears now oh, a good 3 16 of an inch. It has good spring pressure and currently that 832 is way too long. I'm going to cut it back to this black mark and then grind it smooth where it doesn't stick out any further than this nut. I don't want any chance of this music roll possibly hitting that and tearing the music roll. I don't think a uh, full spool of music will ever get up to that point. On the final assembly, that thread will be pretty much flush with the nut and I'll put a drop of Loctite on there so there won't be any chance of that coming loose. So you just push that open. And then when the lid closes, it pushes it back, the spring returns it, and you can tighten it a little more. Depending on your choice of bolt and spring, you may or may not have this problem. The spring on this bolt's a little bit loose. I've used a piece of silicone tubing. 
to keep that spring centered. Another option is to use a sharp piece of uh, plastic tubing. This is an outer guide rod for one of the NI rod radio control or model airplane push rod guides. And that spring goes on that silicone that stays centered. That tube has to be short enough to allow that spring to fully compress. And with the silicone tubing, it's not quite as critical as far as the length is concerned. 